As I've traveled around the world, I have met some incredible people, all unique, and each one I've found has a story. We all have stories. And I've also found that every time we have dark moments in our lives, no matter what they may be, we'll always find a hope revealed. Welcome to Hope Revealed. Hi, I'm Bobby Umar. I'm a professional speaker and coach and consultant. I focus mostly on areas of leadership development and soft skill development, but I'm known for talking about the authentic connection and networking, personal branding, employee engagement, people development, thought leadership, and social media digital influence. I also run BYPB, Discovery Personal Brand, which is a startup dedicated to helping individuals and organizations find more impact, focus, and clarity in their lives and in their professions. And uh, I basically speak around the world and talk at uh, conferences, companies, organizations to deliver training and talks around uh, things that I care about to help them you know, find more fulfillment and find more focus in their lives. And I also run several programs. I run a coaching program for uh, up and coming professional speakers as well as people who want to do basic speaking confidence. I also have a personal branding program as a networking program. And uh, I love what I do and I do what I love and I've been doing it for a long time. Oh, I should also add that I'm a bit of a social media influencer too. I have over half a million followers across Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, and uh, I use that influence for good to talk about empathy, connection, try to you know, call out bullies, and to really help people connect on a more deeper, authentic level. Hey everybody, this is Matt Crump, and welcome back to another episode of Hope Revealed. I'm pretty excited to have an awesome fellow here by the name of Bobby Umar. Some, many of you have heard of him and followed him. Maybe some of you haven't, so this is a great chance for you to kind of tune in and, and find out who he is and uh, what he's doing and what he's got going on in the world. I hear he's got like at least half a million followers on social media, so... <laughs> <laughs> and I was, while we're waiting for Bobby to come here, we're going to talk to his 13-year-old son who's with us today. Is that you? Oh, wait, that's Bobby. Bobby shaved. He's got a, he has no beard on. Oh. <laughs> 13, eh? That's great. I was, I was number 39. So that's, that's great. Oh, that's good. That's good, buddy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you recently shaved your beard off. Yeah, because my daughter is like, uh, Daddy, you know, like, I, 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 I know you like your beard, but I also like your clean face. Can you shave your beard? And I say, look, I like my beard, but I'll give you some time and I'll shave it for you. Because, you know, it's just hair. It'll grow back. So I'm happy to shave. So I agreed to shave it in the new year. And I, but I told her, I'll keep it for off for a month, but I'm, I'm ready to grow, grow the beard back. <laughs> Daddy loves you, baby. I'm going to shave it off for 30 days. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 29. 28, right? Yeah. Now, 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 if the wife said that, maybe I might, I might change my mind, but she right. actually likes the beard. Two weeks. Yeah. You get two weeks, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's really great that you are honoring your daughter. That's something that speaks really well. Kids remember everything when we do stuff yeah. like that as parents. That When we take time out for them to honor them and to respect their wishes, it's pretty awesome. They don't always get their way, but you did something awesome for, for well, your Well, it's, it's about finding the things that I can do. Right. That's right. I'm not going to do like you said, you know, quit your job and move, move somewhere else. No, I'm not going to do that. But <laughs> there's, there's little things I can do to provide joy and fulfillment in their lives. And so the, shaving a beard is nothing. No, it's pretty, pretty awesome. I mean, Except daughter, for you, it'd be a huge deal. But for me, it was a, it was a very short beard. <laughs> for me, I'd have to, it'd be a really a conversation. <laughs> no, yours would be an event. <laughs> like it's serious. there'd be a Facebook event. There'd be a live stream. And <laughs> I know everybody. Crazy, social yeah. media. We're, we have 7 million people today. Although, you know, it's funny when I, when I actually shaved it off, the kids wanted me to do the same thing that last year when I shaved it off, which was to do different uh, poses with it. So first they shaved off the middle to here and I had like this kind of weird look on my hair. Oh, they shaved yeah. off my mustache, then I looked like the Wolverine. <laughs> then I, they they did strips, and I and I post all that on Instagram. It was so funny because they 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 just loved it. Dude, oh, that's hilarious! Me. I'm gonna yeah, yeah. oh so totally when this show airs while you're talking, I'm gonna have those pictures going across. So yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do that for sure. Oh, sure. oh that's gonna be great. So Bobby, you have been uh, ha having the opportunity to speak to folks for quite a while. You're speaking uh, anywhere and everywhere you can, uh, and that's through social media, through stages. Uh, events, clinics, workshops, and what whatnot. Um, have you been doing that since birth? I mean, what, where, where have you come in life? Where are you at now? Where were you before? How'd you get to where you're at? Yeah, before I was exploring a lot of different things, I, I always say that I was, in my first TED Talk, I talked about being a lost leader, and I was lost in terms of different careers. So I tried engineering, then I tried performing arts, I tried uh, brand marketing, 
and uh, nothing really fit. So the speaking thing happened about 10 years into my, was it 10, 10, maybe 10, 12 years into my career. And when I really figured out, okay, you know what, what do I really want to do? What, where can I really find more fulfillment and joy in what I'm doing and impact with what I'm doing? Because I wasn't getting it. In the other ones. I spent my whole life just trying to fit in. And, you know, they, they say that, you know, you're a, a square peg in a, in a round hole. I was basically a dodecahedron that didn't really fit anywhere. And so it was very, <laughs> it was very difficult to fit in anywhere. And even sometimes now I still feel like I don't fit in. I feel like I'm just unique <laughs> and, and different and oddball. But, uh, you know, I, I've been doing it now for about 15 years. 15 years. That's amazing. Yeah. So did you uh, go to, uh, well, you said engineer. So did you come out of high school and go to college to be an engineer? Yeah, so I did. Uh, so when I was in uh, in high school, I was a nerd, basically. So you know, math and physics and science and things like you that. You were a nerd? A guy who wants to be a math guy, engineer? No. Yeah, exactly right. So, you know, I <laughs> love chess and whatever. And so I, I uh, did engineering at, at university at McGill. And then after that, worked at McGill. It was, it was interesting that I worked at as an engineer, actually, uh, at, uh, for four years, design engineer. And while I was doing that job, I was actually bored. So on the side, I decided, decided to start a musical theater company, started producing and directing musicals. And I uh, did that. So almost, wait, let's back up. You're going fast. Yeah. So you were, this was, you were an engineer. Yeah. Um, you kind of got bored with it, you know, because, you know, it's boring doing all this engineer stuff. Yeah. And while you're doing an engineer, you figured you'd go, like, doing some song and dance and some... Yeah, because I always had a musical <laughs> theater background, right? So in high school, I was a musical theater guy. So even back in the day... I had this creative side and I had this you know, analytical side and they didn't merge. And so whenever I, I did those career searches, I get zero results because I was just, <laughs> this, you know, this, this crazy. I'm doomed. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, this. what am I going to do, right? A singing so, engineer. Yeah, the singing engineer, basically. And yeah. so, you know, I, I, uh, I was doing all, I was spending about 40 hours a week just doing the, running the, the, the theater company, growing about 150 people over four years. So, so that was kind of interesting. And then when I left, I was like, now what am I going to do? And so then I did my MBA, decided to go into marketing because I thought maybe I'll maybe I'll do because theater is kind of fun. Maybe I'll get into TV and film and do producing and management and that. But again, that never happened either, and I end up uh, where I'm now. That's, That's crazy. Just, yeah, that is crazy. It's a yeah. neat map. But it's to me, it's always fun to see how God can have ways of of directing our paths when we're thinking. I think I want to do this. No, I've, I've actually created you to do this over here. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Well, no, I've actually created you. To, but everything you've done actually helps you to be better at what you're doing now. I think everything yeah, you probably accomplish as an old, engineer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The old weave. Like, you know, I, I still take the engineering that I'm a problem solver. I'm a medical guy. I take the brand, the mark, brand marketing stuff in terms of, you know, connecting and influencing people. I take the performing arts in terms of, you know, developing a performance when I'm on stage. So, yeah, they all, they all build up to it. Yeah, absolutely. So are you more of a uh, of an influencer speaker uh, of that nature than you are uh, necessarily as like a coach or a life coach or anything like that? You do more in influential stuff, content creation, speaking? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I probably do more of that than the actual coaching. I mean, I started doing speaking 15 years ago. The social media influencer stuff started when Twitter took off probably around 2012 or 13. And I've been coaching people probably for the last four or five years. So that's it's been less. Although I still do it, and I still have the pro, and I, I am doing now more programs because part of it's about scaling my business. Because when you speak, you get paid, but then that's it. And if right. you get hit by a bus, you know, and something <laughs> happens to upper bid, you know, my kids aren't going to be able to get revenue. So creating programs is what I've been doing to try to scale my business, which can be done even after I'm not able to do some of that stuff. Right. Absolutely. Which is yeah. something I'm very passionate about, which is legacy. So you really, right. you really hit a, a, a strong one there with me that, uh, yeah, it's so easy to think that you could go out and be a star. I mean, uh, if anybody's talented and can speak and, and can hold somebody's attention, it's possible to get some gigs. But like you said, what happens if something happens? What do right. you do there? I mean, cause it's not like you can hand over the speaking business to the kids that, you know, don't speak or, or total introvert and can't get in front of anybody. It's, there's, there's nothing to take over at that point. And then you've not done anything for anybody. You've, you've just done it all for you basically at that point. Right. Yeah. So, uh, that's fantastic. You're able to do that. So you probably say on a percentage, are you like a 60, 40, 70, 30 when it comes down to that? Or, or are you moving towards 50, 50? I would, give a, hmm. I would say, I would say right now I'm more of a 80, 20 because I'm trying to move the other ones to move the needle to more 80 balance. speaking, 20 
programs or are they yeah, 80, 80 speaking, 20 programs slash coaching. Gotcha. Like, so, I, but I'm trying to transition more to do the other stuff because I, speaking is great, but I, and I love it. Uh, in, in fact, it's my favorite thing to do. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But it's hard to do it. They're few and far between. Sometimes I go away, like when I go like you know, to India or Dubai or Poland, uh, and that's four days away from my kids. And I don't like that. I'd rather spend more time with them. Like, right. I, so that, that's kind of my, my reason for also shifting as well. Because kids no, are young. No, no. They're going to be gone in 10 years. And then I'll, I'll be like, wow, how much time did I spend with them? What Maybe happened I, with them? Then you can go speak all you want. Yeah. Yeah, then, then I'll be okay. Then so I'll do you want to try to get to like, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm doing all the math stuff here. So do you think you'd, you'd probably feel more comfortable cruising in at a 50-50? Hmm. Uh, you know, I haven't actually determined what the, uh, the amount is. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, just I a think real that, quick blank. What would you think you'd feel comfortable at down the road? This is what you can hand off. This is a legacy box. What do you think it would, what do you think that magic number, I'm not holding you to it, but what do you think that magic number might be? Um, well, in terms of where I spend my time or the impact is, because what I would say to you is that where I'd want to spend my time is still doing far more speaking than the coaching and the programs. I'd rather have the programs and people benefit from it, but I'd certainly much rather be a Tony Robbins speaking on stage and doing that kind of stuff and doing the workshops as opposed to doing the one-on-one coaching. So, right. you know, but in terms of, you know, the impact, I think that ultimately the coaching and the online programs will have far more impact and reach more people than the speaking thing. But ideally, if, you know, if, if all things are great, I'd still rather have, you know, 60, 40 speaking versus uh, the programs. 60, 40. Yeah. That sounds, yeah. About, that sounds about right. Yeah. Well, I, I consider speak. I love speaking as well. Absolutely love it. But I'm, I'm really passionate discipler. So I, I, I consider speaking more evangelical and, and everything else is more discipling. So you can throw all kinds of stuff out at people from the stage and, you know, 10 minutes, they walk away and say, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. What's that one thing he said, or you know, granted there's people that are note takers and really dig into the stuff, but you know, a lot of folks, they don't remember things very easily in sure. our culture and, and uh, you know, kind of throw stuff in the wind. So there's great benefit to being able to pour into people's lives and be able to, to really, you know, to, to get things to them that they're going to, you know, toil the toil, uh, get the soil, toil. <laughs> right. <laughs> Till, that's what I'm trying to say. Till yeah. the soil. Till the soil. Mercy. Yeah. So, uh, so you've been doing that for quite a while, 15 years or so now. And uh, you've had some folks that were kind of saying, hey, look, I think this is where you need to roll. And you kind of, you kind of felt like you were no longer the square peg in the round hole, but you, you fit. And uh, now you have an opportunity to move around. So I guess another question, I guess, logistically, there's a lot of folks that are listening to the program today or watching and, and uh, you know, some folks that may be new at this uh, or, you know, even a little bit into it and trying to figure out some things, you know, what would be some tips to people that are trying, you know, for, want to try to make uh, <coughs> That's all right. Some folks that are trying to find uh, event planners, meeting planners, um, organizers or whatnot to say, how in the world do I get heard? How do I, how do I meet people so I can get a speaking gig? Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's a lot of things that come into play. Number one is to know exactly what your speaker story and brand is. Like, you know, what, who you are, what you talk about, why people would care about your message. That, that There's a whole story and brand around that piece. The second thing is to, you know, have the right marketing materials. So when I reach out to people, you know, I have the, the one page or I have the website, I have the video content so that people know where to see my stuff as a speaker. And then uh, number three, a lot of people don't know how to pitch to people. They don't know actually how, how to write the email or what to say and what's the good subject line. How do you find? And then the fourth one is where, where are these people? Like when you're networking, so there's going to be a networking piece, there's going to be a social media content piece, there's going to be um, there's going to be a messaging piece and you need to know where these people are in terms of how do you reach them when you like event planners, for example, is, is there a event planner conference? Is there a event planner group? Are there event planners LinkedIn that you can go talk to? So these are all the things that you have to think about when you're trying to get a speaking, but it's, but it all starts back to the speaker story brand and what are your topics, right? What are your one, two, three topics that, you know, I will care about because if there's there too like, many topics do you have, so you can, should you have a laundry list of stuff? Like, you know, I speak, I can speak on, I have things you can, I can wing it kind of, I don't yeah. want to say that, but I can yeah, wing don't, it. Don't say you can wing it. So. I know, don't, don't do that folks, it's but so, you know what I'm saying? I could go yeah, there, yeah. but I do have said topics, said things, right? Um, so for somebody who doesn't even know what that is, so do you, are you saying have maybe three to five topics with headline, sub, sub headline as your yeah. information to be able to share or should it get like, I can do 10,000 things? No, you definitely shouldn't have that many. I mean, so, I mean, just to be, to be frank, I've done, 
I've been speaking for 15 years and now I have six standard speeches, right? Wow. Uh, when I work with people, I say you should have three. What's the three? First off, first, what's the one? What's the three? And the three, like for me, and even for me, the three, they, they fit in a nice little triangle, right? It, for me, it's all about the power of connection, right? So my LinkedIn live stream is called the power of connection. So personal branding, connection with the self, authentic connection, networking, connection with others, social media, digital influence, connection with the world. And so th that's what I talk about for right? everything I do. So for, for the most part, that's, that, that's my big three, but I also encourage people to have just three. And yeah, if you have too many, you're not going to get the hitch. You're not going to have the focus. You're not going to have the impact that you want. Right. Because at that point, people think you don't, you're not clear on anything. You have too much. Right. And you don't have, you're not a niche, you're not a brand, you're not somebody that speaks specifically on or to something, right? Right. Yeah. And I've always had the trouble too of being like one of those jack of all trades, master of none. And so I never really felt that was excelling at one thing. But, and so I'd always do multiple things. And I still struggle with that sometimes, you know, like, uh, like I said, I have six talks that are my standard signature talks, but you know, I, I, what are the one or two or three that I would do? I sometimes I have trouble picking because I've had a very diverse life and there are things that I want to talk about. Uh, and there's even new ones I want to talk about. Like, you know, I talk about cyberbullying and, and talk about empathy and dealing with divisive behavior on social media. Uh, to me, it's a great thing that I talk about a lot. And I love using my empathy muscle to do so. However, my agent and my clients don't want that as a speech. Wow. But that's really at, a, at the core of what you're really passionate about right now. Sure, know? sure. I mean, it's, it's one of many things I'm passionate about. It's, it's one that I see as a great opportunity. Another one, of course, would be talking about my health journey, you know, which has been good and bad and ugly. And so, you know, that's another one. But again, you know, my agent and other people I talk to say that there's, there's hardly, there's less of a market for that. There's more of a market for talking about LinkedIn or, or digital influence or authentic connection than there is talking about your health problems or talking about, you know, empathy and, and cyberbullying. That's a big revelation, I think, for a lot of folks to hear today, because I think there's a lot of people that are very passionate about what they're passionate about, for sure. And not everybody is a, a marketer. Not everybody is a, a brand person or a LinkedIn person, per se. Yeah. Uh, heck, I talked to a lot of people today that think that LinkedIn's just for resumes still, you know, so oh my gosh. I know it's, uh, yeah. it's amazing. But uh, point is, there's a lot of different folks out there. And, um, you know, in my line of world, I, I, I get to reach a lot of people that are passionate about life and, and life events and, and of course, health and all those things. And um, yeah, that's not exactly what everybody's wanting to hear, which you would think, why don't you want to hear? <laughs> but they, <laughs> but I guess that's, you know, you have a chance to do your podcast. You have a chance to, you have a chance to speak your heart. Um, it may not necessarily be from, from the XYZ stage for their event, but you, you get to speak your heart, which is, which is good. So you know, I think some of the hope there and show in hope revealed today is that even though you may have a passion to do something, uh, you may have to do something else you're equally passionate about. Um, and then use other means to, to speak your heart. You know, it's not well, like- And the good news is that, yeah, and that's why, you know, social media is great because when I do videos or live streams, it's 80-20 rule. 80% is focused on the target of what I, of my main brand. The other 20% is whatever I want to talk about. And sometimes someone might say, you know what? I love what you did. So like, for example, someone said, I love when you talked about your diabetes and can you come in and do that? So I will go do it, right? It's, it still led to business. It, it, but it doesn't mean I'm always going to do it, but you know, it was still nice. So even talking about those, the stuff outside uh, also can trigger some really good opportunities. Yeah, no doubt. Well, you know that you brought up uh, a couple of things here. You did bring up diabetes and, and I know that you had, uh, you know, here we are talking about health, right? And uh, th this is a great time to do it. So, you know, there was some times in your life, of course, this show is, is hope revealed. And we talk about some folks that have had some moments in their lives and, and it may not have looked so good. And from, uh, from our discussion before the show, you, uh, you've had some moments like that. Would you care to share some of that with us? Uh, you mean like the start with the dark stuff first? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, one of, the, one of the, the biggest challenges in my life was trying to find a way to fit in, right? So I always felt lost and stuff that was in my life and my career. Um, but there was a moment where I was working for my last corporate job. My wife and I started trying to start a family. We're having trouble. So we go to see a doctor. Um, so that's the first thing we, we can't. And so in December went to the doctor and uh, having trouble with that. Meanwhile, uh, we didn't know, we didn't know why. Then, uh, finally, and then in January, I had my first ever anxiety attack, I had a panic attack at work, which kind of floored me because I'm usually a pretty chill guy. Right. <laughs> and so 
I, I couldn't believe, wow, like what happened there? Like my heart was pumping, my mouth was dry, it was kind of crazy. Um, and so that happened. And then, um, and I was just overworked. I was working 80 hours a week, making money for a company, you know, and making, helping them make millions of dollars for their brand. And that was just, which is fine and dandy, but like, you know, where's my life? And yeah. then uh, the doctor said to me, uh, you know, you need to check something with your blood work, you know, um, can you come in? And I didn't come in for three months. I was so busy, so overwhelmed. I didn't come through. So then three months later, I went in, they said, okay, you have diabetes and a normal blood sugar level. And this is in Canadian terms because they, they use different levels than, than the U.S. Uh, normal level 6.2. Uh, your, your, rest, your fasting uh, blood sugar is 12, was 12 in December. And now in March, it's 16. And that's why you're feeling tired all the time and headaches and now you can't and, I, and at that point i couldn't even work 80 hours a week anymore i was getting so tired and exhausted at 6 p.m i would go home and just collapse wow and, and uh and then they said you need to like get your life in order and so i went to my company and i said look i need to take two weeks off i need to get my blood sugar under control then i want to take my hour something normal and i said i said normal was 50 but i like bring it down uh and then three weeks later they give me a package said see you later like basically wow, that's, uh, that was sweet yeah, they didn't, but they didn't want me to, they didn't want me to be, I wasn't their problem. And it was a huge reveal. Like he was like, whoa, like, uh, and so like a lot of things were going really weird and dark and confusing. And then finally, two months later, my wife almost dies of E. coli. And what? That was, it was just absolutely a crazy thing. I'm sitting there. You were still unemployed at that time too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was really, really odd. And, and, uh, you know, we, we, we went to, took her to the hospital and like, it, what was amazing was that my brother just happened to be home. We, we went to my parents' house. She felt sick. Uh, and then she we decided to stay over cause she was feeling so sick. And then I went to a training session and then my brother called me and said, oh, I'm still home. By the way, I, I'm taking her to the hospital cause she's feeling weak. But, but my brother was so uh, strong enough to carry the, the car. If he hadn't been there, cause as soon as she got to the hospital, about, about 20 minutes later, she passed out completely and went into um what's that called septic shock right holy smokes and uh and then i'm there i, I got to the hospital too at this point i left the training session and then the doctor comes listen can i talk to you said, sure so your wife went into septic shock and now we have her on life support and i was like this is like within an hour right your wife is on life support the life support i was like are you kidding me uh okay oh my gosh. uh what can you tell me exactly what happened like uh, uh she <laughs> had headaches i i i, I up. and then they take me to the back and you go to the emergency room. You know, like an emergency room where it's usually like a gigantic, it's like a very large room with like, you know, 10 curtains, right? And so, and there's like two or three people with the curtain, you know, with, a, with one person there or one person in there and their spouse or something. And then there's one curtain where everything's open and there's my wife, there's blood all over her, you know, her, because they, they basically plugged a hole right into her artery. To get oh my antibodies Lord. Antibodies. Yeah. And there's five doctors and health specials on her, like trying to, keep her alive and figure out what's going on it was and i'm just standing there like this is what is going on i just went to a, a conference <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no because I mean, she was we going grocery shopping yeah. yeah so it's just like it was so surreal to, and you horrible know, and it, she was in icu she was in icu for a week and then in the hospital for another week i took care of her for two months and that whole six month period was just a really really surreal dark i mean dark dark and that like we didn't know what was going on and we were told what was going to happen um you know i almost no kids at that point no kids at that point so i almost lost but i almost lost her uh and uh yeah it was it made us really think like what's important like what do you want to do like i had my anxiety attack i had the diabetes i was like over the corporate didn't think i was gonna fit anymore she had that thing and we're like what do we want to do with our lives yeah. And it really made us think about like what the heck is going on here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so all okay. So that's all that stuff happened. So, yeah. oh my gosh. So, what was the hope revealed to you? Was it was it space? Was it time? Was there a voice? Somebody's uh, somebody shared something with you that was great advice, or uh, what was that? What yeah, was that so, moment for you? Yeah. So the hope the hope reveal kind of came a little bit later because. One was, you know, she and I talked about how do we want to live our lives? What do we want to do? And I was like, you know what? I don't think I want to go back. Maybe I need to like figure this stuff out. And, and I started uh, just um, doing like surveys and asking my friends and booking calls and just talk to people and stuff. And everywhere I went, people started saying the same thing, which was, you know, um, I went to my, I went to one of my, 
mentors and say, Bob, you ever thought about doing public speaking? Like, yeah, no, no, I'm trying to make it in the corporate world. You know, I want to become a director. That kind of thing. He's like, okay, but I think you'd be good. You know, you make an emotional connection. You're really good at talking to people. And then I talked to um, people in the industry and they're like, you ever thought about public speaking? Because, you know, one time we were at the, we were, had, had an offsite for the marketing offsite and you ran this team building event. And it was so good. Like you were just like on the <laughs> ball and you were like doing the stuff and you related back to business and you had these great takeaways. And I'm like, no, no, I'm just, but I'm trying to like, I'm trying to make it big. I want to become the next vice president, CEO, you know. Like, <laughs> and then finally, and, and then, and then I finally went to my four best friends. I call them the council, the council of Uma. <laughs> my, four, my four best friends at university. I said, guys, here's what's going on. I'm not sure what I want to do. Like, you know, I don't want to go back, start all over. I'm not sure, like, you know, this didn't work out for me. I'm feeling a bit lost. And they're like, have you ever thought about becoming like a speaker? <laughs> no! And I, and I was like, you know what? I have. <laughs> As a matter of fact. <laughs> everyone's telling me this. <laughs> and so then I sent out this survey to about 100 of my friends. I have a large network, right? So 100 of my friends, they all fill out. And they're all like, yeah, good idea, brilliant. Like, I was just asking for ideas of things I might talk about. And they're like, oh, you're being a speaker, a trainer? Good idea. Actually, I know somebody. And they're like, boom, 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 boom. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> so then. I, I, I'm, okay, I'm going to do this. Okay, you, you, you like convinced me, guys. Like, and that was over a period of two or three months. But uh, by, by the time I like, finished, finished the survey and, and uh, I, I talked to my counsel, like, Okay, I'm gonna be a speaker. Let's let's do this. Like uh, I was, I was convinced that that was the light, the light was like oh, oh, oh and then gonna do. This. <laughs> so do you? And think I didn't have that... a plan. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Yeah. But I knew at that point. You know what? Everyone's yelling at me. The signs are all there to go do this. So it makes sense. Might as well try. You Might know? as well try. Exactly. So do you think that uh, that getting let go from that job was a godsend then? Absolutely. Like uh, you know, you know, it's funny when it when it first happened too. Uh, the truth is, and I, I, I didn't explain this part, I was on that job for only eight months. But when I um, got the doctor's thing in March, he'd said everything started, your pancreas fell apart around December, around November, December. Which, so I'd been on the job for about six, 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 seven months at that point. And so I went back to my employer and I actually kind of blamed them and said, look, everything in my life was the same, except now I work eight hours a week. The stress level is really high. I had a panic attack. And now my pancreas has shut down and now I have diabetes. And so when they gave me that package, uh, it was a nice package. They oh, they were trying. It was hush money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like six months. Oh, my and, Lord. And so that was a godsend in the sense that I'm Absolutely. using, it took using care this to figure stuff out. Because then in the fall, about you know four or five months later, I took a program to help me design my business. And then I officially launched my business in January of the next year. So, yeah, that was really great. What a blessing. Yeah, that's really awesome then how everything worked out. So, yeah. okay, so your wife's okay. Yeah, she's good now. Everything's thriving. And yeah. do they know where she got this E. coli from? Was it McDonald's or something? Or <laughs> <laughs> no, it turned, out, it turned out she had some sort of kidney function that, a kidney um, sorry, condition that led to uh, something getting stuck in her urinary tract, which then led to E. coli. Wow. Yeah. That's just crazy. crazy. Yeah. And then you're balanced out now, I would assume. Everything's good to go? Uh, yeah, yeah. Everything's good now. Everything's good. We're all That's awesome. Out. Got kids Kitten. now? Got the kids, all kids, kids 11 and 9. And yeah, no, it's, it's wonderful. All I mean, your friends are sending you back notes saying, I told you, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so awesome. What a, what a great moment. So uh, we talked a little bit a moment ago about, uh, about legacy, about LinkedIn. So I want to I do a couple of those things before we, sure. before we end the show here today. But um, you said, um, you know, you had kind of a platform here on LinkedIn. You have a podcast that you do. And uh, what was the name of the podcast again? It was just called the Power of Connection Broadcast. Yeah, because that's something you're passionate about, which is connecting with people and, and yeah. having that connecting moment. So is there kind of a, do you, have, do you follow the same kind of a format? I've, I've, been, I've heard the show, I've commented before, but for those of folks that don't know, yeah. what is, What's the format of the show? How do you run that? Is it, uh, you know, are you still, you're doing your little triangle thing there on the show too? No, oh, no. <laughs> no, I typically, I typically um, I do it three to three. I mean, I was doing it every day, but it got to be too much. So now I try to do it three times a week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8.45 a.m. Before, you know, the workday starts, uh, that type of thing. And then um, essentially I'll focus on topics around connection, leadership, personal branding, employee engagement all the type of stuff that I, I love to talk about, but I also like to have people I interview. So usually I just share a story for five, 10 minutes, you know, and engage people. Then 
uh, share uh, some nuggets based on the topic. I usually target about 30 minutes. Uh, share another 10 minutes of, you know, here's my insights, here's my top five tips, or here's what I think about this topic, whether it's employee engagement or networking or personal branding, whatnot. And then people engage and ask questions. They say, look, you can ask anything you want. So it's, it's also an A&A, ask anything you want. And that'll usually last 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. And then if I interview somebody, same thing. I'll, I'll, I'll usually focus on their topic because I want them to either compliment what I'm talking about. If they're an expert in some area, let's, 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 let's dive into it. I'm a good host too, so I'll ask questions and try to dive into what they're doing, engage the audience. And we'll spend about 30, 40 minutes, you know, having them share their story and their expertise for about, you know, 10, 20 minutes and then intersperse with questions and answers. Uh, but usually 30, 40 minutes is usually what I go for. If it goes, if it goes well, people are there and they're asking lots of questions. We may go as long as an hour, but usually it's around 30 to 40 minutes. And that's live on LinkedIn? Live on LinkedIn, yeah. So we do it live. Whether it's uh, we, I meet the person live in person, if they're from Toronto, or if they're from somewhere where you are, we'll do it like this with, with two videos, and I'll use the software to help me uh, do the, the online. Right, thing. right. Somewhere like God's country where I'm at. So that's what yeah. I say. Yeah, North Carolina. Nice. <laughs> I, just say, I just say you're south of me because I'm Canadian. That's right. Yeah. Well, oh, anybody like New York is south of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you Southerners. That's right. You crazy Southern. That's slow life down there. You Southern Michigan people. Come on. It's <laughs> crazy. So legacy is important to you, obviously. That's some of the stuff we talked about on the front side. To be able to have something that you could uh, hand off, because I think that uh, in a in a life where somebody is a speaker per se, and uh, there's some folks out there stories I've read in the past that have. Uh, married or have children and they just go out and do their thing and and the wife and the kids take the back seat really it may not be a uh, upfront thing that they talk about but it really is what happens and at the end of the day somebody has a heart attack or something happens or or whatever and then it's over um, there's nothing left so um, if some folks are out there well not if some there are folks out there if folks are out there now you know starting in in their own business maybe they want to be a a content creator or podcast or, or speaker. It's a totally different world we live in now. I mean, yeah. podcasting was just, I mean, it's a joke back in the day. And now it's, I think podcasts are going to probably surpass um, radio eventually. Sorry, yeah. radio folks, but it's probably the way it rolls. Um, you know, what would be some advice you would give to folks to stay focused, to stay in line, to know where you could, you could move into a place, obviously, if they're married. Um, if you're not married, it's still uh, you know, chances are most people will eventually get married of some sort, you know, and, yeah. and probably have kids. So how could you, uh, how can you get into something with the mindset of, of legacy? It's a good question. I mean, the, the first thing that comes to my mind when I look at my legacy is thinking about the top five regrets of a dying, right? So when you die, whether you're 80 or whether you're 40, what do you want people to remember about you? And most people regret if I could sum it, the five regrets into two main themes. One is I wish I had had better connections and relationships with people that I really care about. And number two, I wish I had explored the grand diversity of this great earth and done interesting things. And so for me, the legacy is something that I think about in terms of what do I want people to remember me by. And, but, but legacy comes in many forms. And it's not just the accumulation of the entire life you have. Legacy is in the moment too. So I tell my kids every day when they go to school, I say, I love you, have a great day at school, have fun. But most importantly, I say, make people feel good. Because the best thing, it doesn't matter how fast you are, how smart you are, how strong you are, what your grades are, uh, and, you know, and how, what, what kind of success you have. If you make people feel really good, that is the greatest impact and legacy you're going to have on people. Oh, and I so for me, as a business person, my legacy is how did I make people feel? Did I fulfill their hearts? Did I fulfill their impact? Did I get them to a place of greater happiness, joy, and fulfillment? And do they remember me for doing that? That is my professional legacy. The, sec the le other second legacy is really my kid because my greatest legacy journey and story is being a dad and being a parent because the two of them, I may impact a million hearts, which is one of my goals as a business, but these two hearts, they're going to go on as hopefully global productive citizens of this earth. And that to me is my greatest legacy. So for me, you know, they talk about work life balance. It's, it's, it's really life balance. What are the things that I want to do? Well, there's work and there's my life. There's my kids, right? And so there's my work as a speaker and coach. There's my work as a parent. And then even as my work as a, as a friend and a son and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, that's the type of thing I think about legacy. So the other thing about legacy is that there's balance you have to find in the moment now. 
being present and mindful in the moment now, because that's also legacy. I can have a profound moment right now with you, with my child, that will fundamentally impact their life the rest of their lives. We all remember something that a guardian or an advisor or mentor or even a parent, that thing that happened when you were five or 10 or 12 or 20. Absolutely. And so maybe it's already happened for my, my, my son and daughter. I don't know. Maybe it's going to happen when they're 14 and 12. I don't know. But being mindful in each of those moments can have huge impact. So if you want to have legacy, legacy is about thinking long-term. Legacy is about having that bound. And legacy is also about being in the moment to make sure every single moment counts for your business and for your personal life. That's yeah. What I no, that's so good. I think it's Amy Lou Harris that said, uh, was it Amy Lou Harris? Amy Lou, uh, she says that uh, it's not what you do, not, not the things that you accomplish, but it's, it's the way you make people feel. Sure. Right. The same yeah. thing, same thing. And I think, I mean, I love that too. I, I want to be able to be a person that does that. And I'm a singer songwriter too. So I, I love nice. music and I, I would love to say, I like singing too. We should do it. Let's we do it, buddy. We got to yeah. come back. We'll do a live. We'll do a song together. It'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. People will be like, what are they doing? <laughs> it'd be fun. It'd be so fun. <laughs> Oh, but I've always heard, you know, people singing songs or people like, man, I wish, I wish I could sing like that. I say, no, I just wish I wrote that song. Right. <laughs> yeah. I just, there's some songs out there that are just so powerful, so amazing. And, yeah. and uh, I just think, man, I want to write a song like that. I want, not because of the money. I want people to be like, I can't Remember you. think about this song. That's right. It's, it's a big part of, of your heart, right? So whether it's a song or, or it's a math problem or, or whatever, you know, it's about, and you, know, and you know, I should add that, you know, when you talk about, uh, you know, legacy, you talked about, uh, you know, hope and things like that. You know, the other thing he'd mind too, is that every single one of us struggles and we go through difficult times, but it's always good for us to be mindful and to, to ask for help, have the courage to ask for help, get feedback. There are people out there that will and can support you. And, you know, I think that, that's ultimately one of the, a big lesson too for those of you out there who are trying to figure out how to become a speaker or whether they're trying to do something else. You know, don't settle for less. Find that moment. Find that thing that's going to drive your passion to you and create that legacy and impact and joy that you want for your life. Yeah, no doubt. You know, you segued out pretty good on that part because I was going to get there. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> I didn't even have to ask the question. Uh, you must do this a little bit, I think. Right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Bobby, if people want to get a hold of you and to find out, to, you know, some about your programs, maybe maybe there's an event planner, a meeting planner out there that uh, would like you, or maybe some really sexy guy with a nice long beard to come speak at an event somewhere. <laughs> How could they get a hold of you? Well, he'll have a long beard here shortly, in about another another 15 days. Sure. the The best way is um, my website's called RayAllen.com. That's where all my stuff for speaking is there, speaking and coaching. Then on LinkedIn, my main profile talks about everything from coaching, consulting, speaking. It's all there. I have a LinkedIn company page too. And then ultimately on social media, Twitter, Instagram, uh, you know, Facebook, all the different ones that are out there. My handle is Rayhan Bobby, my first two names. And that's where you can find me doing everything. Got you. And those are probably all available at your website. Yeah. And uh, we'll have, that will be magically now appearing magic. at the bottom. Magic. It's magic now. Love it. as well as some some extra shots of your beard look from instagram yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so cool and you do your your linkedin lives uh monday wednesday friday eight forty five a.m is that right. eastern time eastern time yes yeah that's that's the time that everybody should be running on it's eastern time eight forty five eastern <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's tough sometimes when you talk to folks like are in australia and yeah. Like that. So when you're trying to, to coordinate schedules, it's, it could be rough when they're 12, 15 hours or like some places in India, it's like uh, 12 and a half hours. It's 30. Yeah, you know, and sometimes I mix it up. Like sometimes I'll do it later because, you know, I feel bad for the West Coast folk. I feel bad for people in Hawaii and they're not getting it, you know, like, yeah. so we, it's nice to mix it up once in a while. 80, 20 rule, right? So I just do 20% That's right. of other times. Because Bobby cares. Yeah. <laughs> here to connect. <laughs> He cares yes. to connect, see? Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us, Bobby. There's, if there's one more thing you'd like to say on the way out to folks, is there a, is, what's that one thing you would say for 2020 for people that you know, may, may be stuck or somebody that's trying to get to the next place or you know, had been somebody where you were at before to where you're at? And what's that one thing you'd leave, leave us with today? Well, it would be fight for your life, right? Fight for the life that you want. Fight for the, the love of your life, fight for the career you want, fight for the health you want, fight for the impact you want. If, you, if you're not going to fight for your life, who will? And if you are willing to fight for your life and you ask for help, 
I'll help you fight it too. That's fantastic. Thanks so much, Bobby, for being with us today. And folks, just like Bobby said, you know, there could be some moments you go through some dark times and dark circumstances, and it could really seem crazy while you're going through it. But at some point, at some time in your life, there's always going to be a hope revealed. Thanks again for tuning in to Hope Revealed. For those of you that are listening, you can always find us at podbean.com, Spotify, iTunes, wherever you like to find your favorite podcasts. Make sure you like us, download us, and definitely share us. You can also find us at LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook to watch the video version. I hope today you found a Hope Revealed.